uh, right as we were about to record, word came out uh, of the passing of Antonio Inoki at 79 years of age. I don't even know where to start on Antonio Inoki. I mean, it's just, you know, I guess the the he's, you know, he may be, when it comes to pro wrestling and MMA, you know, one of the most influential people who ever lived, um, you know, and certainly modern. I mean, he's the, you know, Ricky Dozan is, is always, will always be the biggest Japanese wrestling star. And Antonio Inoki will always be the second biggest Japanese wrestling star. Um, you know, he started his own company, which is New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is, you know, one of the largest companies and most enduring companies in the history of the business. And, um, you know, had a match with Muhammad Ali and all kinds of famous pro wrestling matches with, you know, everyone from Dory Funk Jr. to Billy Robinson to Johnny Valentine to, you know, the martial arts matches with Willem Ruska and and uh, uh, Leon Spinks, which was not not one of the one of his high points. Um, but, um, you know, the um, you know, he was very, very influential in the birth of MMA in Japan in the, the heyday of pride and, um, you know, um, broke off with his own group and that led to a scandal that led to, uh, threats that pretty much killed pride, I think in some ways, because the, it, it exposed the mafia influence in pride. And, um, you know, I mean, there's just so much of, um, so much, uh, you know, as far as Inoki goes, I mean, he nearly killed J new Japan pro wrestling. Um, but also was the one who built it and um you know um you know i mean he, he was he was a much bigger star in his country than hogan is in this country um you know obviously not as big as Dwayne because Dwayne's a movie star but um you know i mean that's the best comparison is is in japan he would be hogan but but uh, uh, you know far more a far bigger degree he's not as well known now um, because his heyday was so long ago and, and like wrestling isn't as big with kids and everything and the history of wrestling isn't as, as big. So there's, there's a generation of, of younger people in Japan where he's not a big deal, but in his generation, I mean, um, you know, I mean, he'd, he'd be, um, Ali Jordan level, you know, mm -hmm. with, with the people of his, of his generation, you know, I would say Jordan level. Um, they, you know, when they would do like the, um, they did a, a thing of the most famous athletes of all time in Japan. And um, I think he was like number seven all time. So would, would that be where maybe Jordan might be a little higher than seven all time? Um, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, but but um, I mean, he would be, you know, it was, it was him, you know, um, I think one or two sumos, you know, Sad Haruo and Nagashima, who are the most famous baseball players. So they're like the Babe Ruth and, you know, whatever. Who would be the second most famous baseball player? Babe Ruth's always the most famous. I don't know. Willie Mays. Willie Mays, Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they would be at that level. Um, and, um, you know, so he would have been, you know, at that level. Yeah. Um, you know, for, at a time he was one of the highest paid athletes in Japan. Yeah. Um, you know, just influential and, in, and, in, you know, he got Ogawa and, and everything did some crazy stuff, not all of it good. Um, but, um, when he did the, um, the, the martial arts matches, like, um, the Willem Ruska match and the Ali match and Chuck Wepner and some of the others like that, um, monster man, Eddie Everett. And, um, what was the guy? Um, Oh God. I, um, yeah, the, the, one of the other kickbox, the famous kickboxing, you know, uh, matches that he had, you know, his, though, you know, that would be something like everybody would be home and watch and would do incredible television ratings. I mean, it's like, that was, those would be like in their culture, like, um, I don't know, like the Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan thing, or Billie Jean King, Bobby Riggs thing. Remember those things are just mm -hmm. larger than life television sports events. That's, that's what they would be equivalent to, you know, or maybe like, um, I, you know, Ollie Frazier, you know, something like that, you know, um, you know, may, you know, maybe, um, I think bigger than Floyd and Pacquiao, maybe, um, but uh, maybe not bigger than Floyd and Oscar, even though Floyd and Pacquiao actually did more business. I don't know. It was just it was just like um, but they were giant cultural events um, that everybody knew about and, and everybody watched pretty much. Um, you know, the fact that he got Ali to do a match and then that whole match, what a disaster that was. 
I would have known about that fight before I even understood what pro wrestling was about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of Ali and everything like that. It wasn't a big financial uh, success in the United States, though, because people didn't really buy because they didn't really know Anoki in this country. And, you know, some people just thought, you know, it's a fake wrestler and um, some people just thought it was a sideshow, you know, because it's like a boxer against anything but a boxer like in Japan, a boxer against. You know, Antonio Inoki worked as a as a, you know, attraction in the United States, Ali against a karate guy or whatever, like that in the 70s, we weren't ready for that. Like in the 80s, perhaps or 90s, maybe 90s. I think that that might have been something intriguing, you know, but back then, you know, it was like if it's not a boxer, I don't think that it was, you know, the press and the public and everything like that didn't really weren't going to really grasp that i mean to them the only fighting sport the only real fighting sport was boxing um so it didn't you know it didn't really um you know it was not it was not a big success in the united states you know all mm-hmm. you know compared to like wrestlemania or something like that but um jesus christ you know i mean um i don't even like again um he he i just you know he was he was the guy in all those big angles in Japan with Tiger Jeet Singh and, and um, you know, breaking away from, from JWA and the first time and the second time and starting, um, you know, the Tokyo Pro Wrestling in the 60s, then being the TV star of TV Asahi's wrestling when, when him and Baba were the team in the late 60s, um, you know, during real heyday, you know, the Baba and Inoki era, then starting New Japan and, you know, yeah, t- the Tiger Jeet Singh stuff and the Carl Gotch and the Billy Robinson and the Luthez, you know, those matches. And then into the 80s, you know, when New Japan had its real big heyday with, um, you know, Ricky Choshu and Hogan and Andre and, you know, the Anoki and Andre the Giant and Anoki Hulk Hogan matches. And then kind of like the elder statesman at the Tokyo Dome shows where he would come in and, uh, you know, be the biggest star. And I mean, I just remember... Like, you know, he, he got the the reaction is essentially if, if you ever went to Hogan, you know, the Hogan shows um, in the 80s, you know, where, where when he would do the posing routine and everything. I mean, Inoki was pretty much like that, you know, where he would come out and the place would just go completely nuts. Um, like, you know, like, you know, probably bigger than Dusty, probably maybe not as loud as Hogan, but close. But I would say, you know, J- Japanese aren't going to be quite like the reaction Americans would be to Hogan. So for Japanese, it was bigger in a lot of ways. And he was more mainstream than Hogan, um, you know, as far as like being a celebrity and things like that. Um, And yeah, um, you know, he tried to start stuff, you know, later, you know, a lot of those, he had that concept of the shooter wrestling thing, which, um, you know, fans grew, grew away from it was really big. Like he, he's, you know, a perfect example. He he was another guy who he hit his heyday in the seventies and just kept trying with new japan to recreate the 70s but it's like that was like that era where you do those matches the first time was was really big but after you've seen it it's like people wanted people that were pro wrestling fans they wanted to see pro wrestling they'd seen the gimmick stuff and it worked early on but once that's happened now they want to see pro wrestling and anoki wanted it to stay like it was during his heyday and kept trying to bring it back and it nearly killed New Japan Pro Wrestling. And then he did an Okigenom Federation, you know, doing that. But it, that, you know, and they, you know, they sometimes had successes and stuff. But but it really wasn't, um, you know, it, it wasn't what the wrestling fans wanted. And, and the general public didn't care either. You know, general public wanted to watch kickboxers. They had kickboxers. They didn't want to watch kickboxers do fake pro wrestling. They didn't want to watch MMA guys do fake pro wrestling. You know, they wanted to see if they want to see pro wrestling, they want to see really good pro wrestlers do pro wrestling. So, um, you know, that was that was his kind of downfall in a lot of ways and, and nearly killing New Japan Pro Wrestling. So you you wrote something not too long ago about him, right? Like when he was really well, he's been, he's been sick, but he's been sick for, for a couple of years. And then, you know, you knew it was coming and they did. Um, oh, man, they did. A, they did a TV special on him not that long ago. And I remember seeing him and it was like it was even shocking to me. And I'd been warned about how. You know, he'd been wheelchair bound for a long time and he looked so small and, and everything. And he was always like Inoki, even like, um, um, let's see. So, you know, I, I guess it'd be in the 90s when I would would have seen him. And he was so he was an older guy. I mean, in, you know, I guess he was born in 43. 
So he would have been, um, yeah, like mid fifties and, um, you know, was in great, great shape, you know, ran seven miles a day and had the jet black hair. You know what I mean? He was a real striking figure. Um, but you know, everyone gets old and, um, he had, um, you know, um, that I forget the disease, but it was, um, it was a pretty bad one and it just, you know, took him out. And, um, the last, you know, again, the last couple of years, um, the people who've seen him were really shocked about it. Um, so it's sad. It's, it's sad. He was, um, I think like to me being around someone of all the people I've been around, I think he might've been, cause I, I never met Ali and I certainly never met Jordan, but I think Inoki or Hogan would be the most charismatic person. I think that I've ever been around even more than, than Rick, you know, or, or Austin or maybe Dwayne, you know, Dwayne in a different way, but, but Dwayne, Dwayne, it was different though. Dwayne, Dwayne's different, but, but Dwayne has to be in there. Those, those would be the three Hogan, Dwayne and, um, and Inoki, you know, and then I wouldn't want to rank them, but, you know, I mean, I think Dwayne surpassed both of them, but because of the movie star stuff, but, you know, as far as being a wrestling star, um, you know, Hogan was bigger worldwide, but Noki was bigger in his country than Hogan was in this country. So, um, you know, I mean, he's one of the giant all time giants of the industry that there, and there will never be because of the way wrestling has changed. And, you know, it's, it's, um, more fragmented and there's more things and everything that, you know, there will never be a Japanese wrestler bigger than Inoki. Um, and there will never be an American wrestler, uh, going forward. I think, um, as big as Inoki was in Japan. I don't, I mean, they, I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think that that will happen again. WWE covered it on SmackDown. Michael Cole and Corey Graves talked about him. Triple H tweeted, uh, one of the most important figures in the history of our business and a man who embodied the term fighting spirit, the legacy of WWE Hall of Famer Antonio Inoki will live on forever. And then Tony Khan tweeted, RIP Antonio Inoki, a pioneer in the pro wrestling industry. Inoki's influence and his achievements will live on forever in the wrestling world. He's an inspiration to all of the dreamers. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I, this one, you know, I think pro wrestling is going to mourn this one for a, a little while. Yeah, the, um, I mean, like, I, I keep thinking of like these things where people would line up and Inoki would slap him in the face really hard, you know, the, the fighting spirit thing where, you know, he's transferring. There's a lot of weird mythical stuff in Japan. And, you know, one of the things was, you know, Inoki was a mythical character, you know, besides being a, an athlete. And, um, you know, the idea was, is you, you would, if, if he slaps you in the face, he's transferring his fighting spirit to you and he'd slap, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of people they'd stand in these long lines and he just slap the shit out of all of them you know what i mean and they would smile and be happy and you know he would do that to the other you know to the underlings you know like if you know show spirit you know before their big matches like to fujinami or whatever you know and he was really good at at, at, at um what he was very good at as far as ma in matches is the ability to make the matches larger than life um you know, like just the emotion that he could bring out in a match, like um, one of the matches he had with Fujinami, I just remember, you know, it was it was a very good match. I mean, it wasn't like a what I would call a classic match, but there was a certain aura to his matches that were so large or like the, you know, the Billy Robinson match, you know, to some people, you know, that's like that's pro wrestling. You know, what I mean, that's the epitome of the pro wrestling of that era, you know, and he could hang with. You know, he was a great athlete. He could hang with with the best guys. He hung with Dory Jr. and hung with Billy Robinson and and um, and all that. I mean, when he got older, you know, he had health issues and and wasn't as good as when he was younger. Um, and he was never like he was never as good as as as, um, you know, Tanahashi or Okada. I mean, in no way. But, um, you know, it was a different era. And, you know, you're much bigger on television back then. I mean, you know, they were on prime. He was, he was on primetime TV every week. And, you know, in the 80s, they were doing 20 ratings, you know, it's, it's over 20 million viewers um, to see his big matches. And, and um, you know, the Ali one was probably uh, 40 million, um, you know, and uh, some of those other martial arts matches were probably, you know, 30 million. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's big, big audiences would watch him. And, uh, you know, he was on those early Tokyo Dome shows. He was, you know, he was not always in the main event. He often was, but his match was always the one that. Um, probably got the most heat. I mean, he would always get the biggest reaction when they do the pride shows, 
you know, I mean, the pride fighters, I remember Shamrock would come back or, or whoever that would be at the pride shows. And, you know, he got a bigger reaction than any of the pride fighters that were, were fighting on the show. You know, when he would come out, that was like the, as far as crowd reaction to the Ichini, Ichi Nissan Da, you know, everyone in unison and everything like that and Channing in okay, bum, bum, aye, and all that. I mean, that was, the, that reaction is just freaking, you know, like super, super loud. And um, yeah, but I mean, it was a big, a big part of, um, the the uh the boom of japanese mma um being affiliated with pride and then when he left pride to start his own group you know which only lasted maybe one show i think uh but that was really big and um you know um and that, you know what he wanted and what his vision was was not a vision in in the last you know probably 20 years that was a other than pride. I mean, pride, pride was real big, you know, in the early 2000s. But for the most part, it was not a vision that the masses wanted. Um, so he kind of, you know, he had the generation gap thing where, you know, he wanted it to be he wanted the wrestlers to be perceived as the toughest guys. And and, you know, he would throw those guys into shoots against real shooters which did nobody, never did any of the wrestlers any favors. I mean, like even the ones, you know, like Nagata and Nakanishi were great wrestlers. You know, I mean, um, amateur wrestlers. I mean, they were long past their amateur prime. They hadn't trained as amateur wrestlers. Then they throw, you know, throw, you know, Nagata in there with Crow Cop and Fedor. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's it was it was stupid. But, you know, that was Anoki's vision, you know, that, that these guys, our guys should be considered the toughest guys in the world. Well, great. You know, when you were doing it, the matches were fixed. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not like it's not like you're you were really going to be able to beat these guys, even though, you know, Anoki I mean, he, you know, he was trained by Carl Gotch and he did have, you know, some skill and certainly great athletic ability. Um, but, you know, when, when he fought that, um, you know, he, he, you know, he had the famous match in India that was a shoot or turned into a shoot or whatever it was where he broke the guy's arm. And then the guy's nephew came in and, you know, Anoki, I mean, he went a really long time in a shoot with a guy, you know, who was big, strong. Indian guy who trained his whole life to beat him. And, um, you know, they went, I mean, it's, it's a really long, you watch, it's a really long, tiring match and he didn't quit. So, you know, he had guts, you know, but, um, but he didn't win either. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, then that match was a complete shoot. Yeah. Uh, all right. And, you know, I think everyone will be awaiting, uh, your bio in, in the issue. So yeah, that's, that's this uh, week r rough start to your weekend there as far as uh, work is concerned. Yeah, this is going to be, this is, you know, um, yeah. I mean, like I would say, you know, with the exception of Vince and, um, Hogan, maybe, but even he was more influential than Hogan, but Hogan, you know, um, so maybe even the exception of Vince, um, El Santo, you know, Ricky Dozan, who was, you know, probably, you know, more influential than anyone but Vince. Um, you know, he would be like, you know, so I guess like of our, of, of this lifetime of the last 60, 70 years, you know, he's one of the top three or four most influential guys. Cause who was the, the top guy started a company, the company's still around 50 years later. And, um, you know, it was the institutional company of, you know, company of his country. And he went all over the world, you know, wrestled um, in Brazil and wrestled in, you know, Europe. He was big in in Italy um, for a time. Very, very big. Because I remember Danucci brought him to um, Italy and they drew 15,000 people because Anoki came, wrestled in Russia, wrestled, you know, in, um, you know, um, all kinds of weird places. Never did get that match with Idi Amin, though. <laughs> which you know they were there was talk of that match you know um you know he had all kinds of you know freed prisoners um went to north korea which was mm -hmm. such a you know he got in a lot of trouble for doing that and you know he was told do not do it and he didn't that's another thing with anoki he didn't listen to anybody i mean he's he was he was a, look he was a senator for years and years and years which is another thing you know um he was in Bad News Bears, come to Japan too. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what other stuff he was in. Um, but um, you know, when when he was in 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 political office, I mean, they told him do not go to North Korea, and then he'd go to North Korea, you know, and get censured and not care, and you know, um, just crazy crazy guy with um, 
You know, he was a, a national champion shot putter as a kid in Brazil. You know, he was born in Japan, moved to Brazil. Um, Ricky Dozan scouted him in Brazil, brought him back to Japan. And, you know, when Ricky Dozan, I mean, um, and he would have been 17 at this point. So, so Ricky Dozan scouts, it was Baba, Inoki, and Kentaro Oki were like the three big pupils of Ricky Dozan that he was going to make stars. And he ends up with, you know, those three were home run picks, boy. Kentaro Oki is like the biggest star in uh, South Korean wrestling history and probably one of the biggest, you know, all-time legend of the 70s in, in South Korea. And then Baba, you know, who's, you know, goes without saying, you know, right. I mean, Baba was an Oki's rival, you know, as far as the same, you know, start his own promotion, um, you know, much more honest than an Oki and level headed. So Bob, yeah, now it's like that holier, you know, Baba, Baba's gone and an Oki's gone. You know, the, um, they were the two guys that were warring over, um, Japan in the seventies and the eighties and the nineties, you know, with the, with the two big companies after being tag team partners. And, um, they never did the match, you know, because they were rivals and hated each other. And even when they finally came together for the show in 79, it was just a tag team against um, Abdullah and Tiger, Jeet Singh, you know, rather than against each other. Um, because, you know, I mean, they could have done the 60 minutes, you know, but uh, they the the egos were so the egos with the Bob and Anoki are, were, were huge, you know, like, you know, Billy Robinson. Um, Billy Robinson does the 60 minute draw with Anoki and Baba pays Billy Robinson more money than any wrestler in the world at that time was making 8,000 a week. This is in 75. Nobody's making anything like that in, in pro wrestling. And the reason, and the first thing he does is he beats Billy Robinson in a two out of three fall match, which is the only, you know, clean loss, I think by pin that Billy Robinson ever took in Japan. But it was like, that was the whole thing. It was, it was. It was like he had to prove that he was better than Inoki by beat, you know, paying ridiculous amount of money to the guy who Inoki didn't beat, you know. So, I mean, that's that's how the mentality was in the 70s in Japan between those two guys. And, you know, and Inoki would beat, you know, like Jack Briscoe who beat Baba. You know what I mean? It was the same thing. Probably paid him a ton of money for the same for the same reason. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.